What exotic flower gives us the world's most popular flavor? Find out next on Junk Feud. Oh yeah! Welcome to Junk Feud, the podcast about junk food where we rate and review mystery treats to determine which one will be the undisputed champion of snacks. I'm your host, Mike. Alongside me, as always, it's Alyssa. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, everyone. You changed it up a little bit. Yeah. Liz. Why are popsicles so snobby? Why are popsicles so snobby? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I've ever met a snobby popsicle. Because they have a stick up their butt. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's what you went with? Oh, my goodness. That's a little bit salty there. For somebody who told me I'm not allowed to call them bold and zesty Stop. anymore. <laughs> That certainly was bold and zesty, and that was a dad joke, a joke you tell to your dad. If you'd like to submit a dad joke for Alyssa to tell me on the show, you can send it in to us via X or Threads or Blue Sky Show, sorry, Blue Sky Social, good grief it's late, at Junk Feud Pod or via email to junkfeudpod at gmail.com. Liz. Yeah? Welcome back once again to the world's yeatest podcast. Um, the yeatest show on earth Built like an op, huh. very mad, giving them the ex super bus and hitting them with the res each and every week. Alyssa, we are tired. Yeah. It's late. This is the latest we've ever recorded the show, I think. It's like 10 o'clock. Why are we recording the show so late at night? Um, Because I went to my friend's lacrosse game. Shout out to... Adelia. Adelia, she friend of the show. She didn't even play. This was not her oh. game. What? Because <laughs> this was not her pod. Not her pot. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> shout out to Adelia anyway. Uh, I had a crazy week last week, Alyssa. I was all over the place. Uh, you are smack in the middle of two different sports seasons. Yeah. We are literally down to a single day a week to work on this show, to work on Junk Feud. And uh, it's that's hectic. And it's very hectic. And to tell the truth, it's wearing on me a little bit. I can tell it's wearing on you. <laughs> you are rubbing your eyes right now. You can barely keep them open. My eye is so itchy because I was just outside. Well, anyway, you tell me about your week first. You're playing softball and basketball right now, and uh, th it is brutal. The schedule is rough. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know. It's crazy. It is crazy. I uh, Let's see. Got your brother off the school bus yesterday. You came home from school. We immediately put you in the car, picked up Claire. Shout out to friend of the show, Claire. Took you guys to softball practice. You were at softball practice for what? 45 30, minutes? Like 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. And then uh, Chase and I ran and got you a playa bowl. You like mm -hmm. playa bowls, right? Yeah. Acai berries and Nutella and bananas and all sorts of other good stuff in there. Yeah. So that you could have something to snack on between practices. Then we came back, picked you up, uh, and dropped you off to somebody else who was going to drive you to basketball practice. Yep. And then after that... Your brother and I came and picked you up again mm -hmm. after basketball practice. And then we went to a soccer game. I don't think that you sat down at all yesterday. No. Like on your feet, going, going, going the whole time. Yeah. I. Uh, this is the first time I'm sitting down today because I was outside all day. <laughs> That's right. It was such a nice day out We there. should be going to sleep right now, but instead we're talking about snacks. So Liz, I have to ask you, when you're running around from one practice to another, Mm -hmm. From one tournament to another. Mm -hmm. We already said in between your practices, you like to have pliable. What else do you like to snack on in between sporting events? Mm, maybe like chips. Chips. What kind Pretzels. of chips? Pretzels. Sure. That's a good choice. It's got to be something that's quick that you can eat on the go. Hopefully something relatively filling and healthy. You need to replace all of that energy that you're using. <laughs> I just bought a big bag of Doritos when I was with mom and I just ate those. Well, okay, so never mind then. So not feeling or healthy or replacing any energy. Yeah. Just the normal stuff that you eat. You know, Liz, I remember when I was playing baseball year-round when I was a kid, and uh, we would go from one practice to another every night. I had like two go-to snacks for the scant few moments that I would be home and able to just like grab something out of the fridge and shove it into my face before we like packed up and went out again. Uh, and it was Hot Pockets, first of all. I think I've like, not had a hot pocket since I was in <laughs> like fourth grade. Well, I mean, we're not telling tales out of school here, but you're not missing any. Uh, you're not I missing anything. I actually like hot pockets. You actually like hot pockets, but they have to be like crispy. Sure, like I mean, we have gonna, to make them good on the outside. We're gonna do a whole show on hot pockets. 
in which we will probably talk about the very famous Jim Gaffigan stand-up Hot Pockets bit that he does. Have you ever heard that? No. It's not really safe for work, but it's pretty funny. Liz, uh, I think my my go-to Hot Pocket was the pepperoni pizza. I just like the plain one. And then you're not going to... Oh, you just like Like the, with the garlic outside. Like the garlic butter crust for cheese, I think. Yeah. Pizza flavor one. Yeah. I also like, if you could believe this, I don't even know if they make these anymore. They used to have these things called lean pockets, which were supposed to be a slightly healthier version. And it was in like a uh, a very flaky, like croissant-like pastry crust. And it had chicken and broccoli and cheese inside. I think I had a lean pocket like three out of the five nights of the week for dinner. Discontinued. Yeah, discontinued. I That's not surprising Oh, Walmart. Oh, out of stock. Yeah. Liz, you know what else I used to have? What? You're not going to believe this. Grandma used to buy in bulk microwavable french fries oh see here's the interesting thing you know how when you make a hot pocket it comes in that little sleeve that you have to put it inside that's supposed to like reflect energy and make it Mm. crisp up a little crisping sleeve this was a box of french fries and every single french fry was individually in its own crisping sleeve inside of the box and you would heat these up and every single fry would get individually hot and crispy in the microwave was it good no, it was not good. They did not get crispy, but uh, I was like 13, so I ate them anyway. Haha. Uh-huh. My and goodness, he... my eyes are so itchy. <laughs> yeah, so in addition to being tired, it's also allergy season. And of course, there's. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and half of my face is going to be puffy. Just half? Like my from my, my nose and up. Oh, so the top half. Mm hmm. You're going to have uh, like centaur face, like droopy eyes. Just the top half. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking up puffy allergy face. Oh my gosh. And yes, you <laughs> look like that. <laughs> oh, there's a photo of a poor little child with angioedema hoods. <laughs> I can just use Mike Walshaw. Looks like he's been in a fight with Mike Tyson. That's terrible. Liz, uh, I have a really look good story. One. Well, for those of you at home... <laughs> Who can't see this. the pictures of the people with puffy faces that Alyssa's looking at on her Google image search here. I can assure you they're funny for us, but probably not for these people that are suffering. Yeah. Uh, and we're not going to make you suffer through any more of this because I've got a good story about what I did last week, list, but I'm going to save it for the next episode. And I can tell you uh, it was anything but like a plain vanilla experience. It was very interesting. Hmm. And hey, that reminds me of this week's snack. Up next on Junk Food, it's... Vanilla ice cream. This is a big one. Yeah, Liz, this is a big episode. Another two-parter, just like we did with Hot Cheetos versus Takis. We are doing vanilla ice cream versus chocolate ice cream. Hmm. The coldest grudge match of all time, Liz. Very interesting. Yeah, we're going to try them side by side. Not this week. This week, just vanilla. Next week, chocolate and the big showdown. And we're going to see which one takes home the frozen glory. Couldn't we do chocolate today? Well, because we're doing vanilla fur. I'm in a chocolate kind of mood. You're in a chocolate kind of mood. Which is not very good for today. Yeah, you better change that mood pretty quick. Because Liz, uh, tell the people at home, what is vanilla ice cream? I mean, everybody knows this, but you... Tell it in your own words. Ice cream that's Uh flavored vanilla. Yeah, I mean, that's that's it. That's our show. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. I mean, that's it. It's frozen, sweetened desserts uh, made with milk or cream flavored with vanilla. It's a colloidal emulsion, if you want to be technical about it, Alyssa. Could you make vanilla ice cream out of, like, I don't know, just a smoothie that's just really thick? Like how I make my smoothie bowls, like how they're super thick. That's basically ice cream. You're describing a milkshake. Oh. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. Liz, uh, vanilla ice cream, the most popular flavor of ice cream in the world for more than 200 years. It accounts for more than a quarter of all ice cream sales in the United States. So it's a big one. It's a big deal, vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Liz, do you know anything about ice cream in general, other than the fact that it's cold and creamy and delicious? Um, (laughs) I don't know. You don't know anything about ice cream. It's just ice cream. It's just ice cream. I think we do take ice cream for granted, but it is kind of a miracle. It's sold out of sketchy trucks with a scary siren. Sketchy trucks (laughs) with a scary siren. Actually, there is a, there's a very interesting. No, no, don't say anything. Don't say anything scary. No, it's not scary. There's an interesting history of the song that ice cream trucks play as they roll around the neighborhood. It actually is, uh, 
Uh, well, somewhat insensitive, and probably we're not going to tell it on the show, at least not today. Liz, ice cream or things like ice cream have been around for a very long time, like almost forever, contextually for humans. There are Persian recipes for frozen desserts that are sort of like a sorbet that go back uh, as far as 550 BC. Uh, yeah, that's a long time ago, huh? I learned about that last year in social studies. The Persians or uh, BC. before the common era? Like BC and AC. How about AD? Oh. Or A-C-E, if you want to do the common era thing. I was close. You were very close. You were one letter off. Uh, there were also ice and snow desserts in uh, Roman times lists. Japanese cuisine in the first and second centuries had them too. Who decided to flavor snow and make a snow cone? Well, the Romans and the Japanese. Oh. Yeah. Uh, some of the Roman emperors would have runners that would have to run into the mountains and some of the territory that they controlled in the empire and bring back fresh snow so that they could mix it with fruit juice make snow cones that's pretty wild yeah the uh the first dairy dessert the thing we probably think of as modern ice cream came from the mughal empire so what's now like uh, china probably in around the 16th century and then about 100 years later that treat would spread to europe possibly Alyssa through marco polo himself hmm. do it marco polo <laughs> thank you dad what kind of ice cream did you get at the store for me uh none but you asked what i needed well, I asked what you wanted from the store, and you said ice cream. I didn't say I was going to get it. I just wanted to remember what it was. Bruh. Bruh. No, I just wanted cookie dough. Oh, well, you didn't say that part either. Cookie dough ice cream. So the ice cream list that Marco Polo brought back from China to Europe was more like a sort of like a fruity sherbet. Do you say sherbet or sherbet? Sherbet. See, I say sherbet too, I think just because that's the way that I was raised. That's just what we said. But it's actually spelled sherbet. Sherbet. Sherbert. Yeah, there's only one R. Sherbert sounds more fun because it sounds like you're like you're like us, like a little sleepy. Sherbert. Oh, it's actually spelled like that? Yeah, Sherbet. See? I don't like that. I don't either. I was I was uh older than you would imagine when I found that out, actually. It was very recent. I just found that out today. Liz, this kind of fruity I was today years old. You were today years old when you found out it was pronounced Sherbet. Uh, this kind of fruity sherbet itself. Just say sherbet. Sherbet. <laughs> became the domain of royalty after that list. Really? Yeah, all the royals in Europe were uh, up in arms about the development of ice cream. In fact, there's some evidence that a plate of ice cream was served to Charles II at Windsor in 1671. A plate? A plate of ice cream. Hmm. That's correct. Now, who had the first bowl? I don't know. Probably a bowl was not fancy enough for royalty. Uh, what? A bowl was probably associated with the peasantry, like people that had to eat slop out of a bowl like an animal. <laughs> if you were a royal, you ate your food off of a plate, including your ice cream. Uh, by 1718, there are English recipes for ice cream that are made in specialized tin pots. How about that? Oh. Yeah. Have you ever had a tin roof sundae? Nope. It's uh, ice cream with, I want to say hot fudge and peanuts. Vanilla ice cream, hot fudge, and peanuts. Where tin were roof we? Sundae. Where we got that Sunday in a bathtub? In that tiny bathtub. Oh, the kitchen sink. That was at Disney World. Oh. At Beaches and Cream and the I want to say the Boardwalk or the Be Yacht and Beach Club, maybe. And it was in a, not a bathtub, but a kitchen sink. Oh. And it had a whole can of whipped cream. Remember, a whole can. They did that whole thing and put the sirens on. I don't remember. Well, we didn't finish it. It was too I much. don't remember the last time we were at Disney. I remember Universal. Uh, I think it was at least five years ago now. It's been a while. Bruh. Bruh. We used to go every day. Every day. I huh? mean, every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I'm so much saying random stuff. Uh, to put it in the context of this show, Alyssa, Disney parks are a sometimes food. It's not a thing we can do all the time, unfortunately. It'd be fun. There's lots of good stuff to eat there. Lots of ice cream. Yeah. Well, the, the way that ice cream gets from British royalty to Disney World in the modern day is that uh, it makes its way across the Atlantic to the American colonies. It's the preferred snack of some of the founding fathers lists. Like George Washington? Yeah, George Washington, in fact. Uh, there are some receipts from the summer of 1790 showing that he spent $200 on ice cream that summer, which back then was a lot of money. Well. Yeah, adjusted for inflation, it's like... How much do you think we spend at Rita's? A billion dollars. A year. Rita's water ice? Oh, more than 200 bucks, probably. 
so bad. We're always like, I mean, it's close by and it's convenient and it's delicious. Look out for our uh, Rita's Water Ice show coming up probably pretty soon if I had to guess. Oh, mango ice, mango and con candy. Yeah. They're going to be taking that show down. <laughs> List, you know who wrote down probably the first recipe for ice cream in America? What? Thomas Jefferson. We just had a test on Thomas Jefferson. Did it have anything on it about ice cream? No. Well, if you have to take another one and there's a question about ice cream, you'll know this, Alyssa, which was that Thomas Jefferson probably picked up his recipe for ice cream in France uh, from his butler. And this was a very simple recipe. It called only for cream, egg yolks, and sugar. And then it was chilled and agitated until it was rich and creamy. Hmm. So that was his original uh, recipe. There were 18 steps to that, despite there being just three ingredients. It was a lot to work with. Do you know, Liz, that wasn't the only recipe that uh, good old TJ had for ice cream? Really? No, in fact, there were many more. In fact, one of them uh, from the 1780s, probably 1784, that's since been cataloged in the Library of Congress, if you can believe it, is for vanilla ice cream. Possibly the first American vanilla ice cream recipe from former President Thomas Jefferson in 1784. Okay. Liz, what else was going on in 1784? The Treaty of Constantinople. That's not Istanbul, but Constantinople. Oh. You got it. Huh. God, thank, thank <laughs> that's you. a good one. I understood that reference. <laughs> was, oh, was signed ceding Crimea uh-huh. to Russia. Deja vu right there, I think. Do you get deja vu? Thank you. Thank, of course. The Treaty of Paris ended an American Revolution via congressional uh-huh. ratification. Very good. Henry Cavendish, you're doing this on purpose. Doing what on purpose? <laughs> you're putting the most complicated <laughs> thing. Uh, Cavendish is not a difficult one. I'm not a strong reader. Henry Cavendish <laughs> discovered the composition of water. Uh huh. The Bank of New York was founded. Emmanuel Nat Nat Kant. Kant. Emmanuel Kant wrote a stall. <laughs> I can't read this. Wrote about in. Enlightenment. Very good. Enlightenment. Ben Franklin invented bi- bifocals. Yes. Do you know what bifocals are? No. They're glasses, Alyssa. Ben Franklin, also a lover of ice cream. Why couldn't you just write glasses? Well, because they're a special kind of glasses. Zachary Taylor was born and Henry Middleton died. Yeah, RIP to a real one, Henry Middleton. The list, realist. The realist legend. Uh, Henry Middleton. I don't even remember what Henry Henry Middleton did. Uh, let's see. Who even is it? Henry Middleton? He was a founding... Oh, never mind. No, he was a... Uh, president of the Continental Congress. That's right. President of the Continental Congress. Good old... He was only 67. Henry Middleton. Well, that was probably a good life back then. Why not? I mean, Ben Franklin lived to be about Who a thousand. Who are his parents? Arthur. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Middleton, obviously. Okay, get it, Arthur. Alyssa. <laughs> uh, we said right up front, vanilla is probably, uh, not probably, definitely is the most popular ice cream flavor, and it's not even close. And I think for this reason, for the same reason we talked about right up front when you said, you know, it's just ice cream, people probably take vanilla for granted, I think, Alyssa. Why? Well, it wasn't always this way. Are we going to do mint chip? Eventually, yeah. Okay. I mean, not today. Well, yeah. Or next week. <sighs> Probably not even this year, <laughs> but at some point. This year? I don't know. I got to check. You know what I do know, though? That vanilla is a spice. Yeah, that's right. Vanilla is a spice. And the history of vanilla is absolutely fascinating. And I think also a testament to human ingenuity or exploitation. It's one of those two, probably. Technically, yes, Alyssa, you are correct. Vanilla is a spice. It comes from a flower. Did you know that? Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that because I, well, yeah, I, I read so. it. That's right. Uh, it comes from a seed pod. In fact, the name vanilla means little pod in Spanish. Did you know that? Vanilla? Yeah, like vanilla. V- wouldn't it be vanilla? Well, there's actually an extra uh, I in the Spanish version. It's like bai- bainia, sort of like that. Vanilla? Yeah. It grows on an exotic orchid that's indigenous to Mexico. Probably... Uh, Alyssa, the indigenous orchid from Mexico was naturally pollinated by a very specific type of bee that's also indigenous to Mexico for a a long time. Are we ever going to go to Mexico? I've been there. Like, are we all going to go one day? Like together as a family? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it would be fun. I love Mexico. That would be like, (laughs) yeah. Okay, so 
put that on the list. Uh, Disney World and Mexico, places that you'd like to go. Those are already on the list. Just in this episode. Uh, Liz, we were saying for a long time, Mexico was the only place that vanilla grew because it was the only place that the flowers could be pollinated. And in fact, they have to be pollinated within 24 hours of blooming or they wither and die. And then the plant is gone. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. So uh, what ended up happening was the vanilla seed pods were probably brought back to Europe by Spanish conquistadors, including Hernán Cortés. And because it couldn't be grown anywhere else due to that lack of pollination, it was like insanely expensive and reserved only for the very wealthy, which meant mostly, like we said before, royalty. Hmm. Did you know, Alyssa, that still technically today, vanilla is the second most expensive space. Space? Spice. Spice. The spice must flow, Alyssa, that you can buy by weight. Uh, which is pretty wild to think about because it's in like everything. I know. Well, so most of that is mitigated by uh, the invention of synthetic vanillin, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Or not really the invention. Discovery, I think, is a better term. Yeah. Anyway, the cultivation problem actually gets solved in 1841 by, get this, Alyssa, a 12-year-old slave boy named Edmund Albius. Oh. Yeah. Edmund discovered that vanilla flowers could be pollinated not by bees, but by people by hand. You know what's crazy? That vanilla is pollinated by hand? That's pretty crazy. That it's still pollinated by hand. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) All vanilla grown today is still pollinated by hand almost 200 years later. That's wild to think about. If it wasn't for this 12-year-old kid, uh, most people might never have tasted vanilla in their lives. You know what's kind of crazy to think about? What's that? That they can only date back like... Ex- excluding AD and BC, they can only count back 2,000 years. Do you mean in like written records? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's interesting. There's a lot of different ways that we learn about the past. History is simply the study of the written record. And mostly uh, our written records don't go back too much further than that. There are some stone carvings and things of that nature that are a little bit older, cave paintings and such. We have other ways, though, Liz. There's like carbon dating and geology and... Uh, We're learning about that right now. That's right. It's really... The this law is all of superstition. Really, the law of... Superposition. Superstition. Superposition. You're doing quantum entanglement in seventh grade? I don't know what that means. Well, that's what superposition is. Oh. Uh, Liz. What? Eventually, people figured out how to grow and propagate vanilla plants, but it was still super expensive and labor intensive. And that is until the flavor compound vanillin which is what vanilla tastes like, was isolated and synthesized in the late 1800s in germany Liz. Vanillin. How would you say that in Spanish? Well, probably how you just said it. Vanillin? Vanillin. Vanillin. I don't think that's a Spanish word, but maybe it is. Who knows? So later in the 1930s, artificial vanillin became more available because this is wild too. Newspaper factories were scaling up production of wood pulp for paper, and vanillin was being synthesized using lignin, Lignin. Am I saying that correctly? I guess. You don't know. Lignin, right? You wrote this, not me. (laughs) Uh, Lignin is a polymer that's present in wood pulp, and you can derive the vanillin flavor from wood pulp. So newspapers are printing all this paper. They've got all these wood pulp byproducts, and people start making vanilla flavor from them. And today, about 95 to 99% of all vanilla that we eat is actually derived from synthetic vanillin. Hmm. That's the flavor that most people think about when they think about real vanilla. Really? Now, here's the other thing. There's also something that's called non-plant vanilla flavoring. Now, we've talked about this before. It's technically a natural flavor that tastes like vanilla. Do you know where it comes from? A gland inside a beaver's butt. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Uh, It's beaver butt juice. That's two butt references so far on this episode. We are being very juvenile tonight. (laughs) Anyway, that's gross. A little risky. Yeah, there's there's not actually a lot of that produced. I think it's like a total of 300 pounds per year, which is not much for the entire world. No. So it barely counts. How much money would that be then? Uh, Well, it depends on how much it costs per pound. And what the going rate? What of if I wanted is. to buy three hundred pounds? All three, you want the entire global production of uh, <laughs> non-plant vanilla flavor? Yes. I don't know. I'll have to go and see what the market dictates for that. Uh, real vanilla, Alyssa. However, not gross. More than two hundred and fifty other flavor compounds present in real natural vanilla, uh, in addition to the vanillin. So it's a very complex flavor with a rich royal heritage that's exceedingly expensive, uh, labor intensive to produce. Could very well have been lost from this world if it weren't for the uh, interest of a few key people across history. I love vanilla. It's pretty crazy to think about it too when we just say, "Oh yeah, that's vanilla, whatever." So you know what's really good? What's that, bud? When 
Like not vanilla flavoring, like what do you call it, liquid? Okay, like vanilla extract. Yes, not that by itself, but if you just mix it with butter Ooh. or like sugar, it's so good. Sure, of course. Like I made edible brownie batter. Uh-huh. And I obviously was going to taste it. Naturally. Like, just give me salmonella, but it was so good. What? Your mother, was, your mom. Well, she was very mad. was very me. upset with you for eating uh, the edible, so-called edible brownie batter, which had untreated I, flour and raw eggs in it. Yeah. Yeah. But it but was like, good, though. But I remembered from the show that it's very unlikely to get salmonella. That's true. It is very unlikely. So I was just like, you know what? YOLO. Well, yeah, okay. So you YOLO'd. I yolo my way through a you, lot of stuff. You yeeted the brownie <laughs> batter. You could have just mitigated some of that risk by tempering your eggs and heat treating your flour, but of course that was too much trouble, right? Yeah. So Liz, given all this history and fascination with how unique vanilla is, why do people think of vanilla, the flavor, as plain? Any ideas? Mm, well, I was... No. Well, this is a bit of a crusade that uh friend of the show, Nick Weiger of the Doughboys podcast is on when he says vanilla is a flavor. It's not plain. There is uh, a heritage dictionary definition for the phrase plain vanilla, which is just identifying something that's like basic and doesn't have any embellishment. Like if I looked up plain ice cream, would vanilla pop up? I don't know. You should probably try that Let's out. Let's see. Plain ice cream. So that's an interesting thought experiment. Ah, so. Overview. What is plain ice cream? Yes, plain ice cream is different from vanilla ice cream. Yeah, it probably just tastes like milk, like slightly sweetened milk ice cream. I think there are some European versions. Oh, that are like what that. is plain ice cream? Vanilla ice cream without the vanilla. Yeah. Oh, all well, right. Obviously. So that's more like an ice milk. Probably. That's like saying chocolate ice cream without the chocolate. Yeah. Well, that would be that plain ice cream, wouldn't that it? That doesn't do anything. It doesn't <laughs> explain. Are you disappointed by this? Yes. What did you think you were going to find out here? Stop it. Liz, when I say I want a cheese pizza... I don't order a cheese pizza. I ask for a large plain pie. Oh. But when I want a vanilla ice cream, I don't say I want a plain cone, right? It doesn't make any sense. Well, I bet if you just said, can I have plain ice cream, they would give you vanilla. You're probably right. And that, I think, is the most interesting thing about this discussion. Because part of the reason that uh, vanilla is associated with you know, plain flavoring is because as it became more available and more popular... People realized when they were cooking with it or baking with it that it was very, very stable over long periods of time. So it would last a long time in your pantries or your larders. And uh, people used to use rose water to flavor a lot of things, Liz. But now they probably had vanilla. So they started putting it in just everything. Really? Yeah. And once it goes into everything, it just kind of becomes the default flavor. Is there vanilla milk? There is vanilla flavored milk. Yes, absolutely. Is there no, I was to say Are you going to ask milk. if there's chocolate milk? <laughs> I'm kind of slow right now. I did see at the store the other day, I was doing some grocery shopping and there was a chocolate banana flavored milk and also a plain banana flavored milk. I don't remember where I was. I think I was at Friendly's, but I asked for chocolate ice cream. They're like, we don't have chocolate ice cream. I was like, y yes, you do. And what did they give you? They gave me vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup and said, mix it. Oh, well, that's, that's some interesting service there. <laughs> Yes. The supply chain realities of the 21st century at work. Liz. You know they have a Karen restaurant? I'm sorry, what? They have a Karen restaurant. First of all, who is they? Like, I don't know, places. There's Karen okay. restaurants and- Karen restaurants. It's like a restaurant where you go to and you sit down and you're, you're, you go there to get Matt to get like- Yelled at? Yelled at. It's- Ad advertising a deliberately unpleasant dining experience oh and staff are instructed to insult customers throughout their meal. You know, there are a few different concepts where like the staff is rude to you. There's a place called Dick's Last Resort where they make fun of you while you eat. Uh, and of course, there's the uh, 50s primetime cafe at Alyssa Walt Disney World at Disney's Hollywood Studios where uh, you get yelled at if you put your elbows on the table or if you don't eat all of your meatloaf, you won't be allowed to have dessert. I was watching a video on this restaurant and- On the, the Karen restaurant? The, the Karen walked up to them and dropped the food on the table huh. and they were like, eat it. Gee. <laughs> you know, I have to edit this show while you're making all these uh, Foley effects here. Well, that sounds unpleasant, like yeah. you said. I want to go there. You, <laughs> There's you one in New York. Shout out to um, everybody whose name is Karen. You have been unjustly vilified for the last decade or so. 
Yeah. What if you're a boy Karen? Are you a Kieran? Uh. <laughs> that was a dad joke, a joke you tell to your dad. Liz, uh, <laughs> that was good. even with the uh, vanilla flavor of ice cream, did you know there are different varieties of vanilla ice cream? Really? Yeah, generally, if you're buying vanilla ice cream, you have a choice of three different types. There's vanilla, there's vanilla bean, and then there's French vanilla. Do you know the differences? Um, Vanilla bean. Vanilla bean has the little dots. Yeah, it's got little flecks of vanilla that come from the vanilla bean, the scrapings of the inside of the bean pod. That one makes me mad. Makes you mad? Yeah. Why is that? Because the little spots are throwing me off. What do you mean they're throwing like, you I off? Like, I don't like it. I don't like how they look. You like just the pristine, flat white landscape of a scoop of plain vanilla. Well, plain vanilla or old-fashioned vanilla is just flavored with vanilla, not the scrapings from the bean. Vanilla bean, obviously flavored with the scrapings from the seed pod, from the bean. And then French vanilla, Alyssa, uh, do you know what French vanilla is? Oui, oui. You, oh, you do. Very good. I'm glad that you are amusing yourself here. Uh, yes, French vanilla flavored with vanilla, just like old-fashioned regular vanilla, but the custard base is made with more egg yolks, which makes it a denser, richer, creamier, even sometimes a chewier ice creamless, and even so more yellow French? in color, because that was the French style of making ice cream, which was to be egg yolk heavy. In fact, that was the first kind of ice cream that Thomas Jefferson was making. Remember when we said uh, that his uh, recipe was uh, cream and sugar and egg yolks? That was a French ice cream that was inspired by his time in France. And this is opposed, of course, to the uh, more popular in the United States, Philadelphia style ice cream that most brands use today. And in fact, Alyssa, in the US, there are even rules for determining what can be called ice cream and what can be called custard versus what's just a frozen dairy dessert. It's actually in the code of federal regulations. It is a law in the United what's States. Custard. Oh, yeah. So it's a law in the United States. Ice cream has to be more than 10% milk fat, weigh uh, more than four and a half pounds per gallon, and be less than 1.4% egg yolk. So custard is what I get at Rita's. Yes, that's right. Frozen custard at Rita's because they have more than 1.4% egg yolk by weight. They should just make ice cream. Well, it's a slightly different eating experience, isn't it? The custard is denser and richer and creamier, like we said, like the French ice cream style. Yeah. Liz. What? No matter what you call it, uh, vanilla ice cream is the standard for any number of snack excursions, which we love on this show, obviously. It's the base for sundaes and milkshakes, uh, the filling and ice cream sandwiches, the accompaniment to apple pie, and any other a la mode pastry like a crisp or a crumble or a buckle or a cobbler. Do you know what a la mode means? No. Well, in French, it just means in fashion or something that's fashionable. So nobody knows exactly why it means in American English topped with ice cream. Even the British don't say that. What about tres leches? That's three milks. So could you use ice cream for that too? There is tres leches ice cream, sure. Have you had it? Nope. It's quite delicious. Uh, obviously, I don't I, like tres leches. You don't like tres leches? No. What I don't did, like anything flavored like that. What did we have that was tres leches flavored that you didn't like? We tried it on the show. I don't recall. I just Was it like an anything. Oreo? I don't like anything flavored Trace Leches. Interesting. It is a bit of a mild flavor, isn't it? Yeah. It's like very milky, a little caramelly. Yeah. But you would prefer probably a plain vanilla, right? Yeah. Well, in fact, if you prefer plain vanilla ice cream, you can have it in ice cream cakes. Root beer floats. It's the perfect topping for a warm chocolate brownie, which- On top uh, of a chocolate cake. On top of a chocolate cake. That That's was right. really good. I had that at a pizza place. You had chocolate cake with ice cream at a pizza place? Mm -hmm. Man, that does sound good. Oh, so. Like I was just saying, this, the warm chocolate brownie topped with vanilla ice cream is probably your mom, your mom's uh, favorite dessert. Did you know that? Really? And now for my favorite part of this show, it's Alyssa Reads the Ingredients. Liz, what's in vanilla ice cream? Cream, skim milk, liquid sugar, sugar water, water, egg yolks, sugar, guar gum, vanilla extract, vanilla beans, and... Carrageenan. Carrageenan. Yeah. So this is not that far off from the original Thomas Jefferson vanilla ice cream recipe, which is uh, cream, sugar, and egg yolks. And this one, of course, flavored with vanilla and some other stuff for stabilization and such. But uh, are you ready to eat some vanilla ice cream, Liz? Yeah. All right. Let's get to the rules of the game. Junk feud is a culinary clash to see which treat will be crowned the undisputed champion of snacks. It's a King of the Mountain style battle in which the reigning champ takes on a new challenger each week to see which snack reigns supreme. And Alyssa, yeah. the reigning defending undisputed champion of snacks is... Takis. Takis, yeah. Uh, we had the Zucker tort last week. It made me feel pretty worldly. 
Yeah. Didn't make me feel like it deserved to be the champion of snacks, though. Takis rolls on. Takis rolls on, yeah. Takis looking like a juggernaut right now. Undefeated. Yeah. Anyway, today we're trying vanilla ice cream. Now, uh, obviously, Alyssa, there are seemingly infinite varieties of vanilla ice cream from every possible manufacturer, from uh, Jenny Splendid to Snoop Dogg. So to figure out which version we should try to represent vanilla ice cream as a whole, we looked at a number of different online rankings and reviews, and uh, the general consensus from most sites, including places like Wirecutter and Bon Appetit that we trusted, was that Ben and Jerry's, Alyssa, made the best widely available vanilla ice cream. So that's what we have. Didn't Snoop Dogg go to jail? Didn't Snoop Dogg go to jail? He was on trial for murder. I think he was acquitted. Wrote a song about it. Murder was the case that they gave me. You don't know that one? No. What's a good song, actually? All I know is like the, oh, who is that person? He was in court for murder and they used his like, I got murder on my mind song like as evidence. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. The uh, trials and tribulations of gangster rappers next on Junk Feud. Liz. Oh, um, Y N W Melly. Okay, I don't know who that is. Is that a he's a is rapper? That a person? A rapist? I I think he's still on yeah. trial. Oh wow. Uh, well, while we're thinking about <laughs> something <laughs> yeah, called Y N W Melly, my goodness, what a portrait! <laughs> he's so scary. Yeah. Well, hey, shout out to him. I guess. But he has good music. Really. Yeah. Why don't I believe that? I don't know. Uh, but I like his music. Well, speaking of music, Alyssa, whose music is that? Oh my goodness. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> bow, bow. Well, it's also Vanilla Ice Cream's music, but this time it's from Hagen dazs list, which is fun to say. Hagen dazs Hagen dazs Also sounds very worldly. Doesn't actually mean anything. It's made up. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I thought ice cream It sounds from... German. It does. That's right. It was supposed to sound foreign and exotic but uh, apparently the words haagen mean absolutely nothing just total gibberish i thought Alyssa, that ice cream from haagen was the height of luxury because there was like this fancy round kiosk that they had in the local mall food court and the ice cream was very expensive and i could never afford it so for the sake of comparison and also because it was mostly near the top of the rankings that we looked at we're also going to try haagen vanilla so we have haagen vanilla ice cream ben and jerry's vanilla mm-hmm. ice cream and that means Alyssa. what it's crunch time. Crunch time. We rate our snacks using a tier list from sprinkles to fun dip. Sprinkles to fun dip. So snacks can be graded A, B, C, D, or F with the very best treats earning the elusive S tier ranking. The following contest is scheduled for one serving. One serving. And it's for the undisputed championship of junk food. Liz. Yeah. I got some ice cream here. Yeah. I feel so sticky. Here's a spoon for you. Oh, these are cold spoons. Oh, this feels so good. Well chilled. Well, now my hands no longer feel sticky. So this here is the Ben and Jerry's vanilla ice cream. It says on it, one pint, 473 milliliters. So this is a a legitimate pint of ice cream, 16 ounces. This is not going to be good for me. Oh, yeah, you've got the lactose thing going on. So this says (laughs) uh, on the top of the container, I always love looking at the Ben and Jerry's containers because the font is whimsical. Uh, I love the background with the green grass and the blue sky. Green, green grass. We like that song, right? I love that song. And of course, there's a cow. And here, right on the front, the exotic orchid from whence the vanilla bean comes. Let me do it, let me do it. And then, of course, Ben and Jerry themselves on the back, telling us that they're making the best possible ice cream in the best are possible way. Are Ben and Jerry real people? For us. Ben and Jerry are real people. That's right. When we do, uh, I think when we do the chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream episode, we're going to give the history of Ben and Jerry to entirely real people. I can't do it. And as usual, you cannot open the packaging. Bre- Stop it. Bre- Sounds good. So we will remove the plastic wrapping from the top of the pint container. And let's, I want to get a big whiff of this as soon as we open this up, because there should be a strong, pungent vanilla smell coming off of it. There's nothing. There's not a lot. Okay, so (laughs) (laughs) I do forget uh, the fact that ice cream is very cold means that it has to be aggressively, aggressively flavored. Because the cold ice cream numbs your tongue and your taste buds. So it means you taste less. But this is, mm. <laughs> well, you like it quite a bit. Although it just says vanilla ice cream on it, list. this is a vanilla bean varietal, is it not? You can I see, see it. You can see the flecks of vanilla bean from the seed pods inside. I just need to get all that top off. As you take a big scrape of ice cream right from the top, and I'm going to take one too. 
Now, what are the things you look for in a vanilla ice cream, Alyssa? Creaminess. Creaminess should be rich and dense, cold, obviously. No ice crystals. We don't want any ice crystals in our cold, creamy vanilla ice cream. We want a strong, intense vanilla flavor, I think. Yeah. Now, I, I can smell this right up front, and it smells faintly, I will say, of vanilla. Probably the taste is more assertive, I would guess, right? Yeah. Let's try it out. The ice cream is cold, obviously. It's very rich. It's fatty in a way that sort of coats your tongue and your whole mouth, so it spreads the flavor around. The vanilla is so smooth, so well-rounded, and I believe we said, if I'm remembering correctly, there's vanilla extract and vanilla beans in here. So you're getting sort of like a double punch of vanilla, which is nice. Obviously, when we make our... uh multiversal chocolate chip cookies of madness, Alyssa, we put five different types of vanilla in those cookies. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> you are going to eat this whole thing. Wow. It's easy to see why vanilla is the most popular flavor on the planet. It's so good, but so unassuming. It just tastes like a thing that has always been and should and will always be. Man, that's well, perfect, isn't it? <laughs> Last scoop for you. Don't forget, we have one more to try. Uh all right, so let's put the lid back on this Ben and Jerry's right now. We like it, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's easy. goes without saying. Now let's take a look at haagen -Dazs. Interesting, Alyssa. What do you see immediately when you look at this container? Um, van the vanilla thingy? Yeah, so there is the vanilla orchid, obviously, and the vanilla beans on the label, and it says haagen -Dazs, and it's in the also iconic sort of, would you say this is brown, this color? Maroon. Maroon-ish and sort of like a light brown container. But this one, Alyssa, what used to be a pint due to shrinkflation is now just 14 ounces. Hmm. So this is a smaller container. And I should note, Alyssa, that both of these uh, <laughs> cost, a, cost a lot of money for a little bit of ice cream. Uh, each one of these containers, a pint for Ben and Jerry's and 14 ounces, not 16 ounces. For haagen like five bucks on sale for one of these like eight or nine bucks usually at the store. This also, Liz, is a vanilla bean ice cream. Uh, no GMO ingredients, no RBST, gluten-free. I don't care about any of that. This says, making magic with Madagascar vanilla, sweetened cream, and flecks of vanilla beans. All the same ingredients, more or less, as the Ben & Jerry's. Cream, skim milk, cane sugar, egg yolks, ground vanilla beans, vanilla extract. Actually, so fewer, fewer ingredients in haagen -Dazs than in Ben & Jerry's, none of those stabilizers. Now, this one is a little bit fluffier, would you say, the texture? Yeah. It's a little bit softer, a little bit fluffier. A fluffy ice cream indicates, Liz, a thing called overrun. Do you know what overrun is? Uh -uh. It's air that's pumped into the ice cream to make it lighter and fluffier. But it also means when you buy ice cream, you're paying for air, which we don't want to pay for. We want to pay for ice cream. So immediately a few differences between these. Texture. Yeah. Tell me about the texture of this one. It's like, much softer. It's softer. It's lighter. It's fluffier. It's, it's a little bit. It's not creamier. It's not creamy. It's a little bit grainy, actually. Uh huh. The Ben and Jerry's tastes more like a super premium ice cream. This tastes like a supermarket ice cream. Nothing wrong with that. It's got a good vanilla flavor, but it's a little bit more astringent, maybe. I don't think that's the right word for it. There's a little bit of, you know, how there's sort of that, um, that alcohol bite from pure vanilla extract because it's just vanilla mm. dissolved in alcohol. There's some of that here in this. It still tastes great. There's a bit of a sweeter finish to this one. The Ben & Jerry's was a little bit more, I don't know, muted on the back end. This one has a stronger finish. They're both great. I think I like Ben & Jerry's better though. They think the reviewers were right. So Liz, let's hit the bliss point. Obviously, we love plain vanilla ice cream. Now, the challenge in rating something like this is that Oops. Vanilla is so often used as a baseline. Yeah. The Like we said earlier, it's got that connotation of being something that is plain. Yeah. Or more likely something to build off of. So how do we build off of vanilla ice cream? What do you think for a rating, kiddo? Um, um, a plus. A plus for vanilla ice cream. Wow. That's a higher rating than I thought you would give. But interesting because... 
Just a simple scoop of vanilla ice cream is so evocative and so transformative for a lot of people that they have memories tied to it. There's a nostalgia factor, but also it works individually on its own. It doesn't need any embellishment. I also say A+. Plus. Now, that's a challenge because, you know, where do you go from there? You can only go down <laughs> unless you're going to give something an S-tier ranking. But I think vanilla ice cream, plain vanilla ice cream, especially that Ben & Jerry's, deserves an A+. Plus. I'll give the haagen like a B+. Plus. Me too. I think that's down a whole grade level. Oh, goodness. My stomach is rumbling. You're, <laughs> you're already feeling the effects of both Ben and Jerry. Liz, what do we think? The A plus to vanilla ice cream is strong. Is it strong enough to be the world champion of snacks and take down Takis? Yeah. Yeah, you think so, huh? Mm -hmm. You are willing to go out on a limb and say, Plain vanilla. It's stop. <laughs> Plain vanilla ice cream, the world champion of snacks. Let me think about this for a minute. Taki's had a good run. The chili lime flavor profile, shout out to David Chang, is exquisite. I think we gave Taki's an S tier. But under the circumstances, I think in this case, plain vanilla ice cream list is your winner and new. Reigning, defending, undisputed champion of snacks, Ben and Jerry's Vanilla Ice Cream. And Liz, it's got its work cut out for it because it's got the big contender next week. The yin to the yang. The chocolate. The chocolate to the vanilla. Speaking of chocolate and vanilla, Liz, the Oreo rule uh, is not in effect this week because we don't have any new Oreos. Although, Grandma, uh, shout out to Grandma, sent us a link to a ranking of all the currently available Oreo flavors. And wouldn't you know it, Alyssa, there was a minor dispute between number one, which was the original Oreo, and a close second, our new favorite, the Space Dunk Oreo, which some reviewers thought was the best available Oreo. How about that? Dad. Yes. I think this whole lactose thing going on with me uh -huh. is getting worse. Because I walked into my consumer science class and we were doing this thing with dairy, like we're onto a new dairy thingy. Sure. And the second I walked in that room and smelt the mac and cheese, it was downhill. Oh, no. <laughs> like, it was bad. Well, you are in luck because there are lots of dairy alternatives that are available on the market <laughs> now. When I was a kid, there was lactose or nothing. My cousin Andrew was lactose intolerant, and uh, he had to take lactaid pills or drink lactaid milk, uh, and that was always a little bit strange. But now there's like oat milk and almond milk and soy milk, and, and all I can't sorts have of, almond. Milk. You definitely can't have almond. You know what? You say you can't have almond milk, but well, guess I what? Can. Guess what? Those uh, pliables are made with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. I bet you would like oat milk, though. Ew. I think you'd like it. It's sweet and creamy. It's a little bit thick. It's oh, like, no, I can't it's do like it. milk, but more, you know? Mm. Well, anyway, that's an open question for you. And uh, each week we ask a very important question on this show. Will it deep fry? Can you deep fry this week's snack? Alyssa, yes. Finally, we get to officially talk about fried ice cream, the uh, indelible signature dessert of the defunct eatery Chi-Chi's. chi -Chi. Where food was a celebration. Liz, did you ever go to a Chi-Chi's? No. You ever have fried ice cream? Yeah. You did? Yeah. And what'd you think? Wait. I don't know if I'm thinking of the right thing. <laughs> what are you thinking of? <laughs> I was thinking of the ice cream rolls. Oh, yeah. No, that's not the same thing. Oh, no, I have not. <laughs> I'm reminded of uh, Jason Schwartzman in a Wes Anderson movie. Have you ever traveled through space and time? Yes. Well, no. Space, not time. I don't understand the question. Uh, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> Chi Chi's very famously had fried ice cream on their menu since the inception of the restaurant in 1975. And there was even a song that they sang about it in the commercials. Have you ever seen these commercials? Obviously you hadn't, you weren't even alive. fry ay 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 fry ay 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 ice cream. Like that. It was very silly. Sus. It was like the Mexican hat dance, but fried ice cream. Uh, they would also sing to you on your birthday, which was pretty funny. And it was like, happy, happy birthday from the Chi Chi's crew. Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. Ole. That's good, right? We... Last year, we had to sing happy birthday to my principal with my Spanish teacher. She literally walked us downstairs. And did you sing it in Spanish? Yes. And oh. We went, um, feliz, feliz cumpleaños a ti. Very good, Alyssa. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. And then we said, it was so funny. And, we, and she made us all wear sombreros. As and, one and we had to bring Morocco's. Well, you would have fit right in at Chi Chi's. I think I only ate at Chi Chi's one time in my life. I don't even think I got the fried ice cream when we were there. Uh, it was a scoop of vanilla ice cream. It's frozen really, really solid and hard. Then it gets rolled in a crispy 
uh, cornflake bits, actually, and then deep fried really, really fast. So the outside gets uh, hard and crispy and crunchy and the inside stays frozen. And then it's sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and it's put on top of a fried tortilla that has more cinnamon sugar on it, usually some chocolate and strawberry sauce on top. It's good stuff. I think we're going to have it one day on the show. You like tortillas, huh? Yeah. I do too. A fresh tortilla is like transcendent. You know what I want to try? What's that? A torta. A torta? Yeah. Like a turtle? No. Oh, like a sandwich? Yeah, like the Mexican sandwich. Of course. I want to try that because it looks good. Well, maybe, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. When can we have a torta? Saturday? Saturday. All right, fine. Not Saturday. A different different day. I was trying to think, (laughs) where are we going Saturday? Why why was that such a... (laughs) (laughs) Good grief, not Saturday. Uh, Liz. Oh, Chipotle. Yeah, speaking of speaking of Saturday, Liz, it's time to check out the back of the box, a weekly segment where we play a little game. Yeah. Would you like to play a game? This week's segment is Around the World in 80 Bites, your favorite. Yeah. On Around the World in 80 Bites, we try snacks from across the globe, Liz. What? Uh, we've been on the road a lot lately, huh? Yes. We've been eating lots of new foods. We had Wiener Schnitzel, we said. Which is so fun to say. Wiener. Uh, anyway, when we were in Vienna, <laughs> thank you, I wanted to pick up something that was decidedly Viennese, but uh, the most famous local snack was obviously the Zakertort. So we had that. Tried it last week on the show. Did I, you check if there's nuts in this? I did check today, actually. Yeah, I even got a translation. Uh, I went to a local gas station while we were there to see if I could find some packaged snacks. And instead, what we found were these really wild fried bologna sandwiches. Remember we brought those home for dinner? That sounds silly to say out loud that I, I got a fried bologna sandwich from a gas station in Austria, but there you go. Uh, it was really good too. The roll was good. Um, I didn't find any local Viennese snacks to try there, but I did find some German cookies list or biscuits that the locals really seem to like. So we're going to try them here now. These are the Prinzenrolle Schoko cookies, which was the, uh, according to legend, the first double kick or uh, sandwich cookie in Germany. It's like a reverse Oreo, isn't it? It's got a chocolate filling and then golden biscuits. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to try these out. These are apparently very old. I think they've been making them since the 1890s in Germany. This packaging looks really old. (laughs) It does. It's just a big roll of cookies. Uh, It's going to be impossible to reseal, which is bothersome. Spring break was a while ago. Yeah? Have these just been sitting? I mean, they're sealed. We just opened them right now. They were sitting (laughs) in the pantry. This is a big cookie list. This is this is wider than an Oreo. Like we said, there are golden biscuits with chocolate filling. There is a picture of a, a stately prince embossed on them. He's got a sword and a cape. He's wearing a crown. He's got good hair. The cookies taste The cookies taste like the bread they give you at church. <laughs> so remember, uh, we talked about this on previous episodes. Most of the sweet dishes in european countries are not so sweet to american palates like we overload everything with sugar and they 100 percent do not so probably this biscuit is barely leavened and and barely sweetened but let's try it Mm, yeah okay i see what you mean so this is is that why when jenny came here she thought everything was so sweet yes absolutely shout out to friend of the show jenny who also, when she comes here, asks us to make her potato salad, which also has a lot of sugar in it. Oh, I love the potato salad you make. Yeah, we're going to have to do that again. So I see what you mean from these lists. It tastes more like a cracker, like a Ritz cracker, than it does a cookie, actually. Mm-hmm. It's like a Ritz cracker with a chocolate filling inside. I, I do like the chocolate filling. It's very mild. It's a little bit fudgy. The biscuit is very, very dry and crumbly. And like you said, not very intensely flavored or sweetened. Mm-mm. This would be a nice snack, like... If you were out on the street, not very hungry, not expecting to eat anything, and someone handed you one, and you were like, oh, great, cool, chocorole, I like it. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to seek these, you know? Yeah, you know. You know? Did I transmogrify into a Canadian there really fast? Yep. Uh, Anyway, this is not bad. What do you think for a rating? Mm, Like a B. B, huh? I would would say something like a C, maybe a C plus. It's uh, it's average-ish. It's interesting. I'm glad these exist. Probably I will never buy them again, but I don't really know when I'm going to be in a situation where I'll need a Prince and Roll of Choco. You never know. You never know. They also don't twist. Yeah, I see you <sighs> trying to twist right there. You're just going to get crumbs all over the place. Anyway, um, yeah, B, C. Okay, not great. Fun to have, though. Yep. i got to find a big Ziploc now. Uh, Liz. What? 
This podcast should reach you in excellent condition, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. If you've got a question for us, you can write to the address on the label. That's junkfeudpod at gmail.com. Do you have any final thoughts on this week's episode where we crowned a new champion, list? No. No, thanks. Go to bed already. <laughs> uh, this podcast has contained your recommended daily allowance of fun. For more, go to X Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, or wherever you choose to be social and find us at Junk Feud Pod. You can watch fun-sized reviews on YouTube, buy our merch on TeePublic, and don't forget to catch all the snacks in each and every week wherever you listen to podcasts. Until we see you again for Alyssa, I'm Mike. Hasta lasagna. Don't get any on ya. Bye.